Okay. Mayor, next up, we have our, our, our uh, friends from Miami County Water and Sewer Department. We have here uh, Billy Joe McCarthy. She's a deputy director for WASA, also in the audience. I know you, I'm sure you, Billy Jeffrey, come up for brief presentation. I also want to have a point of personal privilege too to recognize our friends from RER Durham, Rashid. Rashid is there. There you go. Uh, a division chief as well. So we have both Wassa and Miami County Durham. As as you know, Mayor Members Council, we've we've been fielding a lot of emails. And and Mayor, you, you went out there with us with uh, Commissioner Cohen Higgins. And also we have Commissioner Cohen Higgins staff there, Javay Clayton there, the chief of staff as well. So we have all the folks here in, in the room to provide a nice presentation of what's occurring over at the at the uh, the South Dade Water, sorry, wastewater treatment plant. So uh, Billy. Come up. Thank you. Welcome, Billy Joe. Good evening, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here tonight. I wish it was on somewhat better terms, but um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to kind of give you an update of what's going on down at our South District plant. Okay. And I also wanted to share with you uh, tonight, I also have Catalina um, Valandia Lopez. She's our interim assistant director of wastewater treatment and Tom Feister, who is our current AD of our wastewater division. To give you a little bit of an update of Miami-Dade's water and sewer system is we provide water and sewer to the greater Miami-Dade County. And specifically for our wastewater system, we provide service for 2.9 million customers and visitors through waste, three wastewater treatment facilities. In the slide, you're gonna see a purple section and all of the customers that live and work in that section, their wastewater, when they flush the toilet, goes to our south facility. And that is the facility we're talking about tonight. And so that's generally gonna be like uh, Tamiami Canal, um, Chrome Avenue, um, down south, we're all the way down at Homestead and the Air Force Base and then we're bordered by the ocean. Overall, we treat about 112 million gallons a day through that plant and we're growing. Um, as you guys know, we're growing down in Cutler Bay and we've got to grow to uh, keep up. And so if you were to actually think about what 112 MGD is, there's about 650,000 gallons in an Olympic sized swimming pool. On a daily basis, we have about 170 of those Olympic sized swimming pools come through our sewer plant. Um, we also, uh, we, we carry that flow through some 72 inch force mains and about 400 pump stations feed that facility. So what happens when it gets in the facility? The first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna screen out the solids. That's gonna be the grit, the sand, the garbage that you can't do anything with. We're gonna put it in a container and it's gonna go to a landfill. From there, we're gonna go through a series of mechanical processes biological processes and chemical processes to separate out the clean stuff from the solids. The clean water goes through very, very strict standards as identified by FDEP, and they go through our injection wells, deep injection wells. The solids go on for further processing. Um, they're gonna go through digesters and those digesters are gonna continue to break down the bacteria. We're gonna harvest the gas out of that to power um, parts of the plant. And then those solids are gonna be what we end up calling class B biosolids. Overall, Miami-Dade produces 100,000 tons of biosolids on an annual basis. That's about 7,500 truckloads get hauled off of our facility. And up until about 2021, I'm sorry, 2023, we were bringing that to land application sites in central Florida. Um, and so at the time, it was one of the most environmentally friendly things we could do. All of our solids were 100% recycled and that gas was used to power the plant. So we had a pretty good model going on, but uh, FDP, they're really working on nutrients inside of our waterways. So in 2021, they enacted the nutrient management plan that limited the amount of phosphorus and nitrogen that could get in our waterways. So why didn't something happen in 2021? Well, the farms are the ones that actually get the permits. So we contract with the haulers, the haulers contract with the farms, and they were the ones that had the permits for these sites. In 2023, when it was time for them to renew their permits, suddenly all of these rules really started to go into effect. So 
up until July, 2023, we had a good plan. We had more haulers than we knew what to do with. We had more land application sites we knew what to do with, and we had a really good model. After this happened, as we started ordering trucks, trucks quit showing up. They were trying to find space. They kept telling us we're looking for space, but we don't have any place we can bring these biosolids. Um, as it sits right now, where there used to be about 150 sites in the state of Tennessee, I'm sorry, I'm from Tennessee. <laughs> I'm not in Tennessee right now. Um, maybe I want to be today. I don't know. But uh, in the uh, state of Florida, where there used to be 130 sites, there's only 58 permitted sites right now. So how does that impact us? Where, and this is every, every site's going to be a little bit different, but where a site could have one acre to the handle 20 trucks. Now, um, I always get this math wrong. One truck has to be spread across 20 acres. I mean, it's almost impossible to do that. So you can imagine for all of the class B land suppliers in the state of Florida looking for places to bring their biosolids, we had a serious supply and demand issue. So we continued to work from July all the way up through December to try to find haulers that could meet our needs. Um, we got a lot of people promised us and they just weren't able to deliver. And all the while, those solids backed up at our South District treatment plant. And if you look at the picture here, that um, what you're gonna see in the background, all of the black on those drying beds, those are backlog of our biosolids. So what do we do from here? Um, with our team, and, and I want to I want to praise the team. They had to think quickly because obviously working with the haulers wasn't working. So some composting facilities inside the state, they had reached out to us, and we actually drove up to their job site and said, "Hey, or their uh, their compost facility," and said, "Can you help us?" And fortunately, a uh, company called Compost USA, they said, "Yes. How can we? Can we? How can we work?" Um, Director Coley and our local governmental staff said issue that emergency so that you can get an agreement today to start hauling. So it took us a little bit of time to get moving, but um, I'm happy to say that we do have an agreement now with Compost USA to remove these solids. Um, we started working with other vendors, Merrill Brothers, US Submergent, and Cinegro to figure out ways that we can continue to reduce our solids inside of our plant. So we went from having, we were ordering about 15 trucks back in June um, throughout the course of fall of 2023, we would continue to order trucks. Some days we'd get 10, some days we'd get five, some days we'd get seven. Well, I was happy to say starting in about March, we started to see about 30 trucks a day. And even this past week, we're seeing as many as 55 trucks pulling solids off of our, uh, our site on a daily basis. So, so we're making a dent in it. We do see an end to this problem. Unfortunately, um, the solids that have accumulated the more we're spinning these solids because we're trying to dry them because as dry as they are, we pay by the wet ton. We want them as dry as possible. And if it's too wet, it will leave a trail. Um, these trucks are not watertight and we don't want to do that to the local community. So we're continuing to build the relationships. We're continuing to haul these solids. And we've also, um, we probably did not anticipate just how much the odor was going to be. So we also have an emergency declaration to provide prevent perimeter odor control on site as well. So that's what the things we're doing um, for biosolids. I want everyone in the room to understand though, solids where they're being stored, that is an approved um, holding site. It's actually what we call solar drying, which the drier biosolids. We have a project in place to actually build a new dewatering facility. So we'll move away from the solar drying and we'll actually have everything contained inside a facility. And for the most part, everything will go straight from dewatering to a truck and off of our job site. So that's, that's biosolids. In addition to that, the best way to uh, limit the amount of solids we have to get rid of is to not bring as many solids in. So anyone that's familiar with grease traps, um, you have to haul or you have to clean grease traps. And so we, we call that a fats, oil, and grease. And um, also septage, septage tanks. We have a facility at South that actually collects all the fats, oils, and grease and septage for the greater Miami-Dade County. Um, our price right now never prohibited people from outside the county from bringing their septage and fog as well. 
And so we have now limited, if you have, if you create fog or you create septage outside the county, we're not gonna allow you to come to our site. What that's gonna do for us is, we used to have about 120 trucks and you probably got some phone calls about the long lines outside the plant. We're only gonna receive trucks from inside the county now until we can get this project done and get past this emergency. So that's one way for us to reduce solids inside of our plant. And then the last thing we're doing in, this is kind of my, I'm gonna call it a Hail Mary, but it's one more thing we're trying to do to resolve this issue. This nutrient management plan, it is to reduce um, reduce the nutrients that are going into the soil. We've worked with some experts and they have said, hey, we think there's a way that FDOP, FDEP would grant us an exemption that we'd only work on the nitrogen. And so I was on the phone, I was on the phone with Tallahassee when I came up here today saying, hey, what do we have to do to get this exemption? Because if we can get it, we should be able to remove these solids even faster. We've got farm sites that are saying, as soon as you can get trucks here, we'll take your solids. And so we're doing everything in our power right now to get FDEP to work with us. Uh, the website, in case anyone's interested for the contact information is up here. And um, also we're working on some support letters for anyone that also wants to reach out to FDEP or your local legislator. Um, if you email wasdpio at miamidade.gov or contact me, we'll get you that letter, but we're, um, we're getting it approved through the mayor's office just to make sure it frames up the story well. We think if we can get that exemption, we'll make this problem go away even faster than we are working on it right now. Um, where we kind of sit at, we thought we were about 800 um, loads of solids that were stored on the site. Uh, since April, when we really started to ramp this up, uh, we've probably removed about 300 loads. So we got about 500 go. And if everything goes well, we, we should be able to get rid of this. We've said 60 to 90 days. The weather is not our friend. Um, if it rains, it's difficult to move. But if we can do this, this will this will remove those solids even faster for us. All right. Thank you very much for the update. Um, you know, I'd like to point out when we first went out there, um, a lot of these plans weren't in place. It was kind of an emergency situation uh, forced upon on you. Um, a lot of people have asked, well, you know, why didn't we know that this was coming when the uh, Florida Department of uh, Environmental Protection changed the rules? And it's, don't have good answers on why we didn't know. It wasn't on our radar. I don't know if it was on yours. Um, but I do have to say that since then, you know, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Cohen Higgins uh, for uh, helping us uh, raise the alarm. I want to thank you for your staff for receiving us, giving the information that we need so we could share it with our residents. Um, it does look like a lot of the things that we talked about as possibilities that day that we went out there have been put in action. That's, you know, which I think is, is great. I was a little skeptical at first because it's like, well, we might be able to do this. We might be able to do that. And knowing how government can work sometimes might means no. Um, but like I said, I ran into uh, the chief uh, operating officer, Jimmy Morales. He said, hey, listen, we're going to take care of you. We're going to pay market price on getting this stuff out of there. And that seems to be the the thing that started the, the the flow moving again. It's amazing how capitalism works. You pay them and they'll they'll <laughs> haul it away. So, um, I, and I think it's also great that again they used to take seventy trucks a day from outside the county, um, and now they're not doing that anymore. So that also helps. So we are going to do everything we can um, to lobby uh, the state uh, to go ahead and and put this on their radar and, and allow for some emergency permitting. I guess so. We'll work with our lobbyists and our team. Um, I've already spoken to our Senator Alexis Calatayud, if you can to support us, as well as our, our state rep, uh, Alina Garcia, and they're both on board with that. So um, we've got all hands on deck, as Commissioner Higgins said, uh, and we're, we're moving in the right direction, making some improvements. Um, like I said, all of us had to live with this together. It wasn't, wasn't pleasant, but at least I'm pleased uh, by the action taken, moving in the right direction. Um, can you give us a little update on the perimeter odor controls? I, I understand that the South Dade site was the only one that does, did not have a permanent odor, uh, perimeter odor control system in place. The temporary system now, and so what are the plans with the odor control uh, plans? Yeah, yes, um, we actually, it was shipped today. Um, we've got a crew in tomorrow that's actually gonna start doing some of the installation and we're scheduled to have full installation by the end of next week. Very good. Again, asking you shall receive, I guess. So, Council, do you have any questions on that? No. 
Uh, yes, BJ. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick question, and it's more just clarification. Yes. Uh, was the the issue that we're experiencing here in the South District, was it unique to the South, or had the other districts, the Central and the Northern District, experienced similar issues since the policy change in 2021? It is for any utility that creates a uh, Class B biosolids, we're all in the same boat. And um, that was one thing Tallahassee was talking about today is, hey, we have some people that want a two to three year exemption. I said, give me 60 days so I can get my solids off my site and let's talk tomorrow. And he said, well, maybe next week. I said, no, let's talk tomorrow. We we need to move this now. Okay. So it's it's the whole state. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your support. Second, Rob, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd also like to, you know, recognize a couple of folks. We have Lourdes Gomez, the director of RER there with her team uh, there from the Air Quality Control Enforcement Arm of Miami County Durham. I know it's RER, but I still call it Durham. And also, I still, I'd like to thank, you know, uh, Mia Devine from the mayor's Cabas office. I mean, it was a, a quick team effort when we try to get, get all the folks there. So thank you, Mia, for, for you know, getting everybody at the same time. So if the mayor and members of council, if there's any questions for, for our friends from, you know, RER Durham, they're here in the audience and they'll wave at you. So. Yeah, <clears throat> I think they've given a, a great, uh, again, we now know the full story, I, I believe. And I'm, I'm I'm happy that there's action taken. And I'm, again, when we talked, you were talking about the 60, 90 days, but now it looks like it's going to be something much better than that, which I'm very, very happy for because 60, 90 days with, with that level of smell would not have been acceptable. Um, so thank you for your efforts. I think your team has done a great job of mobilizing the forces. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you, Billy Joe.